All right, everybody, welcome to <laughs> <laughs> Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics, episode eight. Eight. Eight is, uh, eight is great. The Elite Eight. Eight is great. Is, uh, well, I'm looking forward to nine then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when you, if you're a golfer, they call eight is a snowman. Oh. I, uh, I've been golfing once um, because uh, it was somebody's birthday and they did, and it wasn't really golfing. It was uh, you go to the driving range. Oh, sure. Balls, and uh, because as I've often said, I was born to um, bowling stock, not golfing. Stock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's hard to make the jump. Yeah. My, uh, my one dumb little joke I always say is I like mini golf better than regular golf because it's only a little racist <laughs> it's mini racist yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh great i guess how racist it is depends on what the uh obstacles they've built are yeah and now you picture the weirdest mini golf course you can that's what you do then. <laughs> uh and who the obstacles apply to i guess yeah that's true. <laughs> if some of them are the physical obstacles some of them are socioeconomic obstacles right at that particular uh, mini golf course maybe you're just not learning the skill set you need before you get to the first hole exactly whose fault is that yep it, that's the system it's systemic mini golf racism <laughs> <laughs> well we've gone awry already <laughs> good for us yes um, team. how was your week by the way um, my week was good. I worked, we made a show, there was no audience, so I don't know if it was any good. I, it's funny, I've been watching, uh, I've been watching the show, and you can tell Seth is trying to figure out if that was funny or not, and that's a, a very entertaining part of the show right now, because that's just a part of the show now, is he yeah. around figuring out if he thinks it worked, <laughs> right. if the couple crew people who hadn't already heard the jokes because that's probably the worst part is you're not helpful at that point because you've been with the jokes all day long well dynamically too in the room he can't see me anyway i'm yeah. sitting where the audience is so he's blinded by light he can see like a semicircle of cameramen two of them in their 70s uh, the cue card guy who literally wrote the jokes down, so he's already heard them. Yes. <laughs> and uh, our producer, Mike Shoemaker, who uh, he doesn't care <laughs> about the jokes. He's like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very funny what a, it's not the sounding board you dream of, <laughs> probably, <laughs> when you're delivering like topical jokes that you hope are like hip. <laughs> Yeah, it seems the things that get the biggest laughs from people in the room are when Seth does a dumb impression. Those yeah, big, yeah. <laughs> I find it's like a dumb impression or you make fun of uh, local sports teams. Yeah. <laughs> or you uh, mention the genitals that people might have. Mention what? The genitals that uh, oh. various people might have, <laughs> what their characteristics might be. <laughs> oh. I thought that's what you said. And I was like, well, I can't be what he said. <laughs> oh, you, you were right to double check. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was my week. How was your week? It was good. Um, so I'm on leave now from a day job. Uh, I jacked up my knee and I'm, I'm not taking advantage, but I can't go back until I get reassessed and I, they got to get me back to a doctor. So the last couple days have been kind of fantastic in that I'm fine more right. or less I still have a lot of pain when I sleep and what I have been told by the doctor is I probably have rather than having more pain apparently at night if you have any pain when life gets quiet and the world gets quiet and you're not distracted by your computer or your wife saying stuff or the dog or any of the other things you have in your life <laughs> as you quiet down you go, oh, I guess that does hurt. And it feels worse because it's the only thing huh. you can feel that's left. It's the only thing going on. Yeah. And every other part of your body starting to shut down anyway, because that's the process. But that effing thing doesn't. It just goes, huh. it's just like, and it's like a pulse is what it's doing. It's going hurts, hurts, 
Hertz does that, <laughs> which is, yep. but I can walk. I don't need a cane. I don't need a cane now. I cannot run. That irritates me because I always liked being able to run ever since I was a little kid. I like the fact that I could do that. I could propel myself forward fast. Yeah. I still like to run places like a 10 year old kid. Like I like to run to the car. It's, huh. not, it's not necessary, but it always feels good to me. And I can't do that. Yeah. yeah that's a drag. Yeah. But you'll be back. Oh yeah. I'll be back run in and causing trouble for waiters at restaurants in no time, <laughs> you know, saying inappropriate things at the kid table. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh so this week alex picked uh angry young man uh by billy joel uh just in case you didn't know it's the one by billy joel, <laughs> billy joel. Yeah. I, I chose a billy joel song this week it was an interesting choice <laughs> um, <laughs> and i gotta say this is one of those songs that when it comes on uh depending upon what kind of mood i'm in i either just find it hilarious it's kind of a hilarious song but it is but it's the the intro let's just talk about the intro before we even talk about the song uh prelude i think it's called prelude to the angry young man right yeah it's like prelude backslash angry young man yeah um yeah and it's well over a minute minute and a half of just crazy piano yeah just like, look what I can do style piano playing. It sounds like just pure noodling by a, by a virtuoso, but noodling nonetheless. Like, I'm like, I don't think anybody wrote this. I think it's just noodled. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's not musically interesting, really. Yeah. It's more like, wow, that's super fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. It, yeah, it's overpowering, but you're right. It's, there ain't a lot going on other than him going, check this shit out. I got you. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and thematically, it fits the song, I think, which is nice because it's uh, sound and fury signifying nothing, which yeah. is the, the, the young, young show off behavior. Yeah. Um, so, it's also great. I, I mentioned this last time. He, you know, I've seen him in concert 15 times or so. And at least half of those times he started with this song. It's a great arena anthem. But uh, anytime he plays, at least in Madison Square Garden, there's a camera very close up on his hands when he plays uh, Prelude. Because it is cool to watch, because it's basically doing this. <laughs> I feel like I could play it if I had a piano. It's just, yeah. But it's very funny to look at his hands, because it looks it's the guy who moves the piano. <laughs> it's not the hands of a guy who plays the piano. Oh, yeah. just His hands look like Homer Simpson's hands. Thick. Goofy. Yeah, he, I'm like, I can't believe he can play an octave with those hands. <laughs> I can't believe he can reach across eight keys. So um, that's funny. It's weird to think that he could even play at all. And yet not only can he play, he's a damn virtuoso. He's he's incredibly skilled, incredibly skilled um, and blase about it. Yeah. And this yeah. song, I think, you know, he's not even 30 at this point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that, how funny that is. Um, yeah, this is a very jaded song. The song is definitely jaded. And uh, does it feel to you like he's talking to his friends from the 60s? <laughs> yeah, like or like the substitute teacher. Yeah. He's like, yeah, telling the kids about the 60s. And he's like, yeah, we thought we were great. And, and you know, it's funny because when I was a young man, I looked up to a lot of the people from the 60s just because, you know, you know, you had your John Lennons and you had all these, you know, Bob Dylans and all those guys doing stuff that felt meaningful. Right. I think there was just one of each, but yeah. Yeah. Really? They only had the one. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> <should> I? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I used to think, man, those guys changing the world. And then the more you think about it, you're like, eh, they didn't change the world. They didn't. It was the same old dumb. No. And in fact, they actively, yeah, yeah. they actively worked against their objectives by going, we're going to shake things up, change things, not vote. It was like an active <laughs> part of their mission was not voting. 
Yeah, it's very interesting also to think of the, you know, some of the guys from that era who are still alive, like Bob Dylan and uh, Paul McCartney. Sure. Who like did all that 60s preaching and are now just watching as we build like concentration camps on the border. <laughs> and like half of the uh, Congress wants to overthrow the election. I'm like, hey, nice work with the 60s, everybody. Yeah. Really landed it. Yeah, I... I'm all, I hope, I just hope that this new generation is different in the, because it feels like they're very 60s in the fact that they're engaged and upset, but it seems also like they're aware they got to vote. Yes. So I think that's that. It. Yeah. That uh, campaign that, that has been going on since Rock the Vote, I guess, has been a, an actual positive thing that's come out of like the music scene. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, no, the, yeah, the system is terrible, which is why you have to participate in it. Yeah. Not leave it and get high in the uh, meadow yeah. <laughs> in upstate New York. You can also get high in a meadow if you want to, but- There's time for both. Come back and vote, yeah. The meadow has Wi-Fi, you can do that. Also make sure you have a proper address. You can't write the meadow on your form. So just have, no. have an address. I have an address. Kids, if you learn anything from this podcast, <laughs> live live in a house. Yeah, live in a house. Yeah, it was great, by the way, how many Native Americans get frozen out of the election because they don't have an address that the white man agrees is a good address. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. No songs about that. No. Not, not from your Dylans or your <laughs> McCartney's. Nope. Yeah, there was exactly one song about the Native American plight during that era, right? I think would be uh, uh, they took the whole Cherokee Nation. That song, a uh, Cherokee Nation. Yeah, that one. I that's think that's who was that? I want to say that that Cherokee. was Paul Revere and the Raiders. Sounds good. Yeah, I support it. And welcome to episode. I'm not googling. <laughs> welcome to episode one of our Paul Revere and the No. All right, so, <laughs> so he does the crazy, uh, it's a, and it's a lot, it's a long prelude. It's a long prelude. It's very cool in a stadium. Um, it's definitely rocking. It's definitely the light show portion of the evening. Um, and then the song. I wanna, you know, I went back and forth and listening to this song a couple times thinking like, Oh, this is him being like ironic and self-aware that he himself is an angry young man. And he's like winking at the idea of being an angry young man. And then I looked at the lyrics and I was like, oh no, he thinks this isn't him. Yeah. Which is hilarious considering yeah. how pissy all of his songs are. And it's super, super, um... Well, man, he likes to give advice, and then and it's another advice song in a way, a particular advice. Like, uh, but this advice, I think, is pretty terrible advice for the most part. I think he's telling you not to try, is what it feels like. <laughs> I guess. So here I'll do I'll do the first verse. Uh, There's a place in the world for the angry young man with his working class ties and his radical plans. He refuses to bend, he refuses to crawl. He's always at home with his back to the wall. I do like that lyric, because it, yeah. it, I like it, that part does seem just kind of self-effacing and funny, but I don't think, but I agree, I don't think he's making fun of himself. I think he's making no. fun of somebody else. He definitely he, thinks he's above all this. Yeah, he refuses to crawl. He's always at home with his back to the wall. I like that lyric because you're immediately saying he's got all these plans, but really he wants to be the downtrodden. Yeah, this is about the victim complex. Yeah. That he has. It's so, not about trying to change anything. <laughs> yeah, and you almost feel like the character that he's talking about would be disappointed if he affected change because then there'd be less to be mad about. Right. Which, I, uh, you know, um, I think, obviously, I think in the context where he's singing this in 1976 he's probably talking about like young hippie types yeah um, 
but uh, listening to it today, I'm like, oh, this is just as easily like the proud boy mindset. Oh yeah, true. No, it's not, it has nothing to do with where you live on the political spectrum. It seems to be all about being a victim and not getting what you want and whining about it. Yeah, and making sure other people know, hey, I'm, I'm the victim here. <laughs> right. I'm the one you need to feel bad about. And I got a great message. It's, you know, and I think, yeah, that's a good observation. I really thought about it that way, but it really doesn't matter. In, in this particular context, it doesn't matter which part of the political spectrum you're on. It's just, you're the whiny victim. Yeah, I think it is very purely about being <laughs> angry and young and a man. Yeah. And not any, not being like an angry young hippie necessarily. It's just, it is like male, it's very male behavior. Right. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> to just be uh angry all the time and not have a good reason and kind of manufacture reasons yeah like the important thing is that uh my back is to the wall and i am downtrodden yeah and then this le next lyric kind of really solidifies that and he's proud of his scars and the battles he's lost yeah that's a actually that's a great lyric that's great because <laughs> <laughs> yeah He's making it very clear, and he struggles and bleeds as he hangs on the cross. Some nice uh, Catholic imagery right there. <laughs> He's back. And he likes to be known as the angry young man. So it's not just that he's angry. He likes, he likes to make sure you know he's pissed off. Yeah. It's hey, what? wasn't there another song we were talking about that had more to do with being known as something? <laughs> than actually being thing. Oh, what was it? I'm never gonna remember. Okay, was it uh, was it one we covered in another episode or was it one? Yeah, we I feel like we had this talk about the difference between being something and being known as something. Oh, yes, no, oh, Big Man on Mulberry Street. Was it? I wanna say. Yeah. It was that. Yeah. Oh my God, it's kind of the same character too. <laughs> it's a very similar character. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact, what you could almost say is that the big man on Mulberry Street is the big man on Mulberry Street talking to us. And this song is we're talking about that guy. Yeah. So the character is forefront speaking for himself in big man on Mulberry Street. Right. Right and now this... we're like, check out this dick. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh yeah theoretically the guy who uh didn't sneak out the window yeah <laughs> run all over little italy i was just like look at this fucker yeah uh, i like uh i like the way he sings this one and i like to i like the part where he just goes and he likes to be known as an angry young man and then we stop for a second and because i think that sets up what we're talking about really well and uh, he's definitely making fun of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, which it really is funny to me because he fully is this guy. He is like, uh, even in the song, is an angry young man about angry young men. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is the battle I'm fighting is having to put up with angry young men. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I like that the song kind of never lets up as far as speed goes until it gets to the part which we'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, I guess you'd call it the bridge. But for the most part, this thing is going constant. It's going constant. It rhymes like hell. It's constantly rhyming. Yeah. It's very ABAB. -A -B. I know, uh, well, and no, none of the weird Billy Joel rhymes in this one, I don't think. <laughs> no, no, no inversion of the normal word order. Yeah. Just, yeah, no, it's pretty well written in terms of getting the lyrics in and making sense of itself. I feel like it just never gets anywhere. Which is that because, is that because it's underwritten or is that because that's the point? Right. And we're back to the question of, is he doing this on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> to which I think, no, I think he just, uh, is only pretty good at this and not great at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
He's like, oh, these are great lyrics. I'm like, yes, but you're missing like a turn where yeah. there's a realization. <laughs> and you're like, oh, you're like the last verse should be, uh, oh, I have just realized that I've been talking about me this whole time. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. Letting you better phrase better and rhyming, but <laughs> like that sentiment, uh, it just is like, I don't like angry young men. D, 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 three and a half minutes, and that's all. Right. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you didn't need us for the whole three minutes. Maybe that's why Prelude is so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there, there isn't much behind this, so here's a lot of piano first. Well, I guess it's good that he wrote more lyrics so that he didn't also have to write Coda. <laughs> yeah. It would have been great. Prelude, <laughs> every young man, Coda. It was like, and then at the end, it's just more. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> The above. <laughs> um, to wit, I'll go on. Give a moment or two to the angry young man with his foot in his mouth and his heart in his hand. Good. Nice, yeah. Um, nicely deconstructing two cliches. He's been stabbed in the back. He's been misunderstood. It's a comfort to know his intentions are good. What about that? That's it. That is so sarcastic as hell is what that is. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the thing where like, you know, like if let's say I'll use the example, somebody's helping you move a big screen TV and they drop it and it breaks yeah. and they go, well, I was helping you move. <laughs> right. uh, yes, it's good. Your intentions are good, but my TV is broken. <laughs> and you can apply that to any number of things like, I meant to call you on your birthday. Oh, I'm glad you meant. To call me on my birthday. <laughs> right, that helps me a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just so you know, not as good as calling me on my birthday. But yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> this is yeah. That's very. Um, that's his um, perhaps Jewish heritage. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that. Yeah. Well, it's a comfort to know your intentions are good. <laughs> your behavior is terrible. It also implies that um, maybe he's been stabbed in the back. He's been misunderstood. It's a comfort to know his intentions are good. Maybe he's been stabbed in the back. Oh, and I never thought about this, Alex. Thank you for, oh, I never, never occurred to me that he's been stabbed in the back is an assertion the angry young man makes. He's not yes. necessarily actually. That is not an outside observation. Yeah. It, and that's why we go to, well, it's a comfort to know that his intentions are good because he's railing about how I get stabbed in the back. I, nobody understands me. I'm doing my best. You're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. He's so been stabbed see. in the back. Yeah. Why don't you just wait till the waiter gets here? We'll order something. You just <laughs> uh, oh, no, he's got kids with him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do like this part. And he sits in a room with a lock on the door with his maps and his medals laid out on the floor. And he likes to be known as the angry young man. Yeah. <laughs> maps and medals. So, um, yeah. Now, and now it sounds like Proud Boys again. Yeah, it does. It, it, so if it's literal maps and medals, or if it's just, you know, the, you know, right. a, a rejection. The paraphernalia. Yeah, a rejection Whatever letter. Whatever the paraphernalia of his rebellion is. Yeah, his girlfriend breaking up with him, the beginning fire, whatever that's the man's fault and not his own fault. <laughs> right, right. So he can sit in his little musky, gross room surrounded by his own choices and blame everybody outside. So I think you're right. I think that's actually quite a good lyric. Uh, sidebar, by the way, a friend of mine who listens to this show, uh -huh. he says, what I like about this show is that you guys are big Billy Joel fans. And then I listen to the show and I think, these guys even like Billy Joel? <laughs> it's not about that. It's about loving Billy Joel. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, tough, it's tough love. <laughs> <laughs> you can love someone if you... Uh, you know all their imperfections and their yeah. terrible qualities and uh, poor lyric choices. Sometimes, sometimes great. Yes, absolutely. This, you know what? I'll say this one is great in terms of like the poetry and the flow of the lyric. It's great to sing. Yeah. 
their great words to sing, standing on their own, not very well. I was talking about this with Sue today. Uh, Paul Simon, fantastic lyricist, who almost doesn't need to be a musician. Right. Could, they're like poems. They're, most of them are like lovely poems. And the music is fine, but not the point. Um, and Billy Joel is like a great lyricist who would be a terrible poet. Yeah. He's a great lyricist for songs. <laughs> yeah. Paul Simon is a great lyricist for songs and or poetry. I 100% agree. I think that makes sense. And and luckily, Billy Joel is a, well, a better singer than Paul Simon, which is not to say terribly much because Paul Simon <laughs> right. is not Paul Simon's thing. Um, uh, I remember when he wrote that song, um, the late, great Johnny Ace, which I believe he wrote when Johnny Oh, yeah. Murdered. I, it's hard for me to listen to that song. It's so good. It's so good. It's one Yeah, of he's got a lot of those. Yeah. I can't listen to him for a long time. <laughs> After three or four songs, I'm like, oh, call my mom or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I'm probably not doing enough to help the world. <laughs> I'm going to go look at some black and white photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and oh. He be known as the angry young man. He oh, likes to be known. Then here we go. This is where he lets you know that he's not the angry young man. Right. This is where the music changes entirely. It's been very jaunty until now. Yeah. And now it gets like weirdly pensive. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one I, these lyrics have always bothered me ever since the song, I've known the song existed, which is a long time. I don't dislike the lyrics because I think they're good, but I think, boy, I don't think I like the message of these. Yeah. That's okay, because it's his message. He's the artist, but they they seem, man, these, this is the, the, the prelude to the giving up man. <laughs> yeah. He says, yeah. He says, I believe I've passed the age of consciousness and righteous rage. I found that just surviving was a noble fight. Uh, and then he goes, hey, I once believed in causes too. I had my pointless point of view and life went on no matter who was wrong or right. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Look, first of all, take those lyrics out, completely out of context and guess the age of the person who wrote them. It's not 80, <laughs> it's not 77. He's 27 years old saying this stuff. I once believed in causes too. Yeah. I believe I've passed the age of consciousness. <laughs> You're 27. Yeah. You're he, uh, two he, years, three years out of college. I don't know, I didn't do great in math. <laughs> You're out of college. <laughs> yeah, you're out of college. Well, if it's Billy Joel, he's not in college. Yeah, yeah. So that's for sure. But you're eight years out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you 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 got your uh, welding you got your welding certificate, and now you think you know everything. Now um, the question now is: Is he Billy Joel or is he an old man character? I think he, he does characters. Yeah. See, I think he's Billy Joel. And this is what I was thinking about in this lyric too. Say you're 27 years old. I can remember, hell, I know some people in their 20s and they do this. I know people in their 20s who have this idea that my friend Vance is a comic and Vance is in his mid 60s. He's an older fella. He's had three cancers. <laughs> all right. He's had three cancers and beat all of them. So good luck cancer uh don't mess with my friend vance he, he's got your ticket but uh he's in his 60s mid 60s very funny nice guy he always makes fun of comics if they're on before them and they talk about being what they've learned as they've gotten older because you'll hear some idiot going you know now that i'm 28 <laughs> or something yeah <laughs> And and he'll and his go-to joke is he'll go, oh boo hoo, I'm 28. I can sit under my own power. 
<laughs> yeah. Then, I remember being 27 or 28 and thinking, oh, it's good. Glad I'm not young anymore. I'm glad I'm not an idiot anymore. And then <laughs> not realizing you have a good decade or two of stupidity to go. Oh, if you're lucky. I mean, we've, I think we all do it. And now that we're old, it's annoying um, to hear other people do it. But yeah, I'm, I work with a lot of people who are much younger than me. And I hear a lot of like, even stuff like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't drink like I used to now that I'm 30. And I'm like, okay. First of all, how much were you drinking before? Because you are lit. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not a goal. Yeah. Um, Here's wisdom of age, by the way, Alex. You can drink as much as you ever did. You just have to understand that things will happen afterwards that you're not going to be happy with. That's just the way. Yeah. But if you want to, do it. Right? It, I, nobody, you're not good at it when you're young either. Yeah. These are all these are the same people who are throwing up on the street corner with their shoes in one hand. <laughs> when they're 20 and they're like oh i can't drink like that anymore i'm like you could yeah you, would you just can't afford to lose any more shoes <laughs> <laughs> uh, i remember in chicago i got really drunk with graham elwood once and we got in a fist fight <laughs> <laughs> and it was a not angry fist fight which is the dumbest thing we were really That's... drunk and we said we should fist fight and i went all right <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, there's a guy who is uh, past the age of consciousness and righteous rage, but is still doing it. Yep, he's full on committed. I wouldn't to being mad at stuff. That's for sure. Great. And, and uh, you know, I'll keep him alive. Yep. And he lives in Hawaii now. Okay. Because his job is completely remote. And he got, he was like, why do I even need to be in LA so I could be sad in LA and isolated or always at the beach? <laughs> He's no dummy. Nope. No. God he, bless him. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's all veganed out and stuff, which is fine. Oh. Yeah. Does he call you for tips? Oh, it's been so, I was not good at it is the thing so like when i was not eating meat i also wasn't eating all the other things that would have supplemented me so i was just i have good advice if you want to be anemic oh yeah yeah <laughs> the best advice if you want to have problems with your blood fantastic so, oh you're a vegetarian uh, just eat refried beans so, oh great yeah. oh i do remember going to burger king with you a couple of times and you're like, oh, I'll just get the whole burger, but no patty. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was a thing for you for a while. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're just getting like wet lettuce. <laughs> to <laughs> me. Like, you should just not come here. And you're like, oh, but I want to hang out with you guys. <laughs> that's right. I when I broke down, because I had been feeling ill, when I broke down, so what they always say with the vegetarians is like, oh, don't eat meat. If you're going to eat meat, you got to only have a little bit because it'll make you so sick because you haven't had meat in a long time right when i broke down i had a full meat meal oh never felt better i had <laughs> my body went yep this was what we were talking about you idiot this is what we wanted the whole time wow i had it's all kinds of listen. i had all kinds of energy <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now's a good time, I think, for me to ask uh, what's going on behind you there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I heard you were looking for one of these guys. I brought options. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. Yeah, I brought options uh, because I heard, I heard, you know, I know you're a fancy person. You're fancy. Uh -huh. you, know that, you know, you live in your, the fancy part of town, you know. I'm an uptown girl. That's right, you are. And, and what were you looking for? Uh, a downtown guy? Well, yes. And there's also another way that we describe that in the song. A backstreet boy? Yep, you're looking for a backstreet guy. Backstreet guy. So I'm giving you choices. Here's a bunch of backstreet boys. You pick the backstreet guy that's for you. Wow. I think for me, it's shades. 
<laughs> you gotta go shades, absolutely. You gotta go shades. Yeah, we can share know. we can share beard oil. <laughs> share beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna have two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That was uh, as satisfying as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, which was a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't set me back, satisfaction wise. Yeah, it didn't make you mad and go, man, I'm done doing this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think once you get to three, you have to go to eight easily. Oh, yeah. Once you're at eight, you got to do all 117 songs you wrote. Hold on. Leave meeting. We're <laughs> 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 uh, young men. You know, I think there is a way. Like we were saying, when we were in our 20s, we certainly had the angry young man thing. Yeah. Where we were pissy and wrong about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And yelling and like getting in small groups and like pumping each other up with how right we were. Yeah. You know, we were all stupid, and, but girls only want date jocks <laughs> and all right. that. Um, but I think there is a way to keep that part of you as you turn into an, an old man. I do, without, yeah. Without just being shitty the whole time. You can be a joyful person with a good life and just carry that as a little sidecar for when you need it. I, I agree. I think you still should care about stuff. I think one of the worst things you see in adults is, oh, yeah. is just the deciding that, uh, well, first of all, deciding that all that matters is, you know, my retirement account or my, you sure. know, what or, happens to me. Yeah. Is the only thing that matters. There's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting evolutionary truth. And that is that it turns out that men and women who don't have kids uh -huh. live longer than men and women who do have kids. That's just a statistical thing right. across humanity. That's but the it, Menendez theorem. Uh? That's the Menendez theory, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. It doesn't mean that's a good adaptation, though, because if we all did that, it, we'd be done. Yeah. So to cor correlate that to what we're talking about is you can just take care of yourself and you can. That's fine. But then progressively, people behind you, it'll be harder for them to just take care of themselves because you've made things shittier and shittier and shittier. <laughs> right. So yeah. and you're, you're a bad tipper. Yes. Yeah, you're one of those people who tips with like, uh, you know, make sure to go back to school. You write dumb notes they didn't need. <laughs> and you think you're helping, but you're like, you know, yeah. All those notes were like, sorry, I have a big family. Well, don't go out to dinner, dick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that always drove me crazy. Yeah, what? I don't have enough money to leave a tip. Huh. How'd you get here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go sell your car and give me a tip. Yeah. So you sold, you used all of the last of your money. I hope you enjoyed the dinner, you dummy, because the only way this makes sense is if you leave destitute. <laughs> right. Yeah. That cheese yeah. Good luck sleeping tonight. Yeah, that cheese quesadilla put me over the top. We, we can't afford electricity, kids. Right. I bankrupted myself at Louisa's on Larchmont. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over for us. <laughs> All right, so then let's go. Let's see where 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 is our angry young man at this point? Yeah, so he had his little moment of bad self reflection, and now we're back to the jaunty. And there's always a place for the angry young man with his fist in the air and his head in the sand. I like. He's never been able to learn from mistakes, so he can't understand why his heart always breaks. That's pretty awesome. Great, poignant, true. Um, I still am like, yes, you're making great points that you don't seem to understand or are applying to you right now as you're singing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is you, bro. Yeah. This is you. You're speaking very eloquently about somebody else's problem. Yeah. Maybe a uh, uh, couple uh, marriages deep. Yeah. I realize this is you. <laughs> yeah, go keep an eye on your manager too. Yeah. <laughs> you want to understand why your heart always breaks. Yeah. Oh God. Just in your Jamoke friends from Long Island. 
Do you think he could be talking about himself? Probably not, huh? I feel like that bridge really rules that out. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, because he's just- The only way is if he's doing a character, which yeah. again is possible. He, you know, there are songs where he is singing as though he were in Vietnam, which he was not. Right. There are songs where he is an Allentown steel worker, <laughs> which he is not. So he might be like fully like musical theater style doing a character, but it really doesn't feel like it this time around. Yeah. Yeah. The the Vietnam song I, I'm pretty sure is a good song whenever whenever we get to it. I'm pretty sure I like that song. That's a good song, I think. Yes, it is a very good song. Again with deep, deep flaws and problems in it. The 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 echo part is always gonna seem silly. Yeah. And the chopper sound. Yeah. Is always gonna seem silly. It's but yeah, it's that same thing. It's theater. Yeah, I, I think the chopper sound would make more would be less weird if it if he were if it existed on an album that was either a concept album or it was all about the turmoil of the decade so that it was meant to be a complete piece but i don't think now tell me if i'm wrong i don't think we've talked does billy joel doesn't have a concept album does he i would argue that maybe innocent man is a concept album you're right okay no that's absolutely a concept album i guess what i mean he doesn't have like a you know pink floyd's the wall where the whole thing is uh <laughs> a full experiment yeah yeah no i don't think so and not that he should. No, he please. No, if you're watching this, Billy. <laughs> first of all, you're very drunk. Uh, <laughs> second of all, don't do that. And I just want to say, if you're watching us, yes, we love you, despite a lot of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't listen to what we're saying. Listen to how we're saying it. Yeah, and understand, we've never taken any of your money. Yeah. So... If anything, I've given you hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I'm giving you a, a fair amount of coin in my day, you know? Yeah, so just give, give me the keys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't do it. Take the helicopter this time. Just have somebody mm -hmm. get you to the helicopter. There, let them drive. Billy. Win-win. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Oh, this we're going to get sued. What? <laughs> But he's never been able to learn from mistakes, so he can't understand why his heart always breaks. Ah, that's a good. That's just good. That's it's just great. Good. And, and certainly, any number of romantic entanglements that we've probably all had, where we went, "Oh, how come that didn't work again?" Uh, you know, I would. Uh, I'm too lazy for this, but looking at it, it's very close to iambic pentameter. I hope it is. I'm again. I'm very lazy, and I'm not going to do anything about this. <laughs> but the way it's written is very close to uh, the way Shakespeare is written. Oh yes, which you're right. if, if he did it on purpose would be very genius, because it is uh, all about human tragedy and overreach and all the things that Shakespeare is about. I am going to decide that that's what he did because that's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> It's more fun than bringing up a theory that doesn't apply and is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say it's right. Yeah. So look at that. That's, that's like Shakespeare right there. Here are your keys back. <laughs> you are clearly in control. <laughs> but his honor is pure and his courage as well. And he's fair and he's true and he's boring as hell. That's a great lyric too. That is. That's so nice because he's like, I... That just feels like when you're just in a bar and a guy's going on and on about what he's going to do and how nobody gets him. And man, when we get the band, you know, when we finish this out, <laughs> we're working on yeah. dumb basement, whatever thing that the guy's doing. And you're like, at first, you're kind of enjoying the conversation. And then you realize he's talked so long, you're now sober again. Yeah. And you're like, and, and he doesn't have any money to buy another round. No, because he's an angry young man. Where the fuck would he get money? He doesn't have a job. He was the guy who you, you're like, I think I've been paying all night. Why is he mad? Yeah, well, it's all someone else's fault. 
Um, yeah, it's it's true. They those people are so boring, and you, it's a trap because you always think they're going to be interesting. Because they're like, oh, they're gesturing a lot and they talk very loud, <laughs> and they know a lot about politics and they've read some weird books. Yeah, uh, and, and zines. Yeah, and the what they know is a trap too because you say they know a lot and then you listen and you go, no. No, no, a lot of that's inaccurate. Yeah, they believe. It is more accurate to say they believe a lot. They believe a lot, yes. They've, you know, they've jumped to a lot of conclusions from one pamphlet. Yeah, this is your QAnon moron. Who, mm -hmm. who, it's the QAnon guy, it's the theater guy. It's the the weed guy. Remember the weed guy in college? <laughs> it was like, oh, if he's just weed cures cancer, they can you can make ropes and stuff out of it. If they just legalized weed, everybody would be happy. And you're like, oh, and you're like, I don't know that people need ropes that much. <laughs> so yeah, that's certainly not happy people. Oh Lord, yeah, that's so fucking funny. It's me talking about some scientific topic I really don't understand that well, but Lord, do I want you to hear my opinion about it. <laughs> yeah. I don't it, know when uh, I realized that. Like in the last 10 years, at some point I was like, why am I bringing up physics? <laughs> Where do I get off? And it's, it made me sort of embarrassed because I was like, yes, <laughs> I read that book, but I didn't understand most of it. The guy who wrote the book should bring up physics. Yeah. And he's smart enough not to be at this dumb party. So yeah. if anybody <laughs> wants to hear about uh, like comedy or cat ownership, I'm then your guy. I'm your guy. And <laughs> and I know enough about it that I have a very restrained point of view. I'll just share it with you. Yeah, I think that's the other thing is actual experts don't yell at people. <laughs> <laughs> right, right the same way angry young men do. Yeah, Feynman never yelled at you. He just knew stuff. There, the you almost have to drag information out of them. <laughs> uh, and he'll go to the grave as an angry old man. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a great com complete thought. Yeah. It absolutely is, and and we've progressed in our analysis. So it isn't just a reiteration of what he said in the beginning, which is nice. So it isn't just he's an angry young man. Right. It's not just where this guy is right now. Yeah. You're I not just he, reporting this guy's current state of mind. You're like, oh no, this is it for him. Yeah, this guy's locked into thinking he knows better. And there are definitely old idiots like that. And the interesting thing is they sometimes will switch sides over the course of their life. Yeah. Absolutely certain they're right. Never acknowledging they switch sides. Yes. Um, thinking of who just wrote the anti-mask song, the, <laughs> was it uh, Van Morrison? Yes. And Eric Clapton. Yeah, Eric Clapton and Van Mo yep. I don't know where they really fell on the 60s radical scale. Yeah, there's been a lot of revisionism regarding Eric Clapton from young folks, and I don't know if young folks are right or not, so I can't say that. I just know they hate him. And uh, yeah. I read somebody said, he's always been a racist. I'm like, I don't know if that's true, and I won't say he wasn't because I don't know what you're referencing. Yeah, no but idea. They, but they're also like, and he's a poser. He he's never really been that creative on the guitar. He just did riffs that other people did. And I went and I thought, well, maybe, but also you have to be able to do it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you do have to learn guitar. So like if I yeah, like if I play if I can play Mozart, nobody goes, that's Mozart. Mozart wrote that. You're still, <laughs> idiot. you're still kind of impressed that I can do it. Yeah, you're a concert pianist. Yeah, so and so I don't know that that criticism is good. I think that's more of a like baby in the bathwater kind of thing where you're just like, I'm tired of this jackass, so all of him, goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have time to parse you out. Yeah. And I, um, I've just, I made myself laugh internally just now. 
this is very beside the point, but thinking of a concert pianist playing a bunch of Mozart and then saying, here's one of mine. <laughs> now here's one from the new album. <laughs> be like, boo. <laughs> That's, uh, oh. That would be a great sketch on uh, I Think You Should Be Going. I think that's what it's called. Didn't that, that Netflix? It's, oh, God. Yeah. What was oh, it? I Think I Should Be Going. It's the. the I Think I, You Should Leave. I Think You Should Leave. Yeah. God damn it. The best. Yeah. I loved everything. Vanessa Bayer on that was one of the many times I was like, oh, I'm progressively falling in love with this lady. She's so funny. <laughs> She's worth it. She deserves it. Oh, it's just God, she's brilliant. Funniest damn human being, just really great. That whole show, wall to wall. Have you ever seen her stand up? I have not, oddly enough. It's one of those things, there's a few people on SNL that are like this, where you're like, oh, they were pretty good at stand up. I'm really glad they got on SNL instead, because it was a misapplication of her skills. Okay, good. Yeah, that happens a lot. In sketch form, a lot of her talent just and, and I know just because I've seen her stand up that a lot of the sketches she writes, she, not everything, but she wrote plenty of that things, I'm sure. sure. Um, it's just in stand up isn't the best. And just like Stefan, Stefan started out on a sketch. And right. then a wee weekend update uh, feature, much better on weekend update than he ever was in a sketch. Yes. And it's just because that was the right way to deliver that idea. That's all. Yep. That's the container is the sometimes the most important part. Yeah. Um, I love Vanessa Bear forever because she used to, when I worked at SNL, she would come by the weekend update office in her very cheery way that I can't duplicate right now. But she or would ever. always she would or ever. <laughs> There's one night in 87. <laughs> uh, but she would come by and go, You guys, I have I wrote some weekend update jokes for you. And then she would try to make them up on the spot. <laughs> like, okay, President Obama, wait. Yeah, Obama, um, he said to a crowd today, and she would just drag it out forever, never say a joke, and basically see how long we would listen. And it was delightful. That's so great. I, would, I wish that would have gone on the air. I mean, it I was I, interrupting and going, hey, I wrote, that's so great, because I can picture it. Yeah. That's one. Yeah, because she has a very specific voice. Yeah, her, her very specific her, style. Her nervous weather girl. Ugh. Oh, great. Such a funny thing. Yeah. Yeah. And a nice lady, from what I've heard. Like, nobody I've ever heard who actually has met her was like, well, you know, privately, she punches people. Nope, so we just can be very, very, very nice. Yeah, and uh, um, if you ever get a chance, watch her story on Colbert about oh. how leukemia started her down the road of comedy. It's yeah. a great story. I've heard it in bits and pieces from her. Yeah. Um, pretty insane. Yeah. There's a lot of cancer in the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to explain what's going on? I'm fine. Okay, good. Yeah, Me too. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. As far as I know, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, family wise, who knows? Because it's hit a lot of us. But also, the funny thing is, I don't know how funny this is, but you know how, <laughs> you know how it'll be like. Oh, I wonder if I'm, I, maybe, maybe I'm prone to getting cancer because these this many relatives of mine. And then I look back and I go, yeah, that many chain smoking drunks somehow got cancer i don't think i'm going to inherit that yeah <laughs> you know, that's like inheriting getting hit by a bus you know like a lot of people in my family get hit by buses so that's probably what's going to happen that's probably my fate yeah um, so <laughs> then i don't know like i said i shouldn't be mouthing off about science maybe there is a bus hitting gene i don't know <laughs> might be yeah. I feel like you're on the right side of history, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you'll, well, you'll publicly apologize if that comes to be the case, right? Absolutely. If it turns out that there's a getting hit by a bus gene, I will made, issue a mea culpa to all the people who care what I think. 
Oh, no All one? right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, we have you on tape. There's still <laughs> tape, right? Is there tape? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, well, well I, mean, I might be an angry old man. Well, All right. I, I think we're done with the song, right? We finished, the, we figured it out. Well, he went to the grave as an angry old man. There's a place in the world for the angry young man with his working class ties and his radical plan. He refuses to ban. Is this just uh, reiterating? It is the first verse again. Oh, wow. Okay. Which, you know, is uh, boring as hell. Yeah. As it were. Like, Although maybe that's the point. It's like, oh, it, he's starting again. He's saying the thing that he said before. I think th I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it up as intentional this time because it actually <laughs> makes a good load of sense for this song. Yeah, I think in this particular case, I'm like, yeah, you're just letting everybody know. Yeah, this jackass. Next time you come to the bar, you're going to have the same conversation. Yep. And next time either make peace with the fact that you're buying all night or don't hang out with him because he does not have money. Yeah. After the first time, it's all on you. Remember when I used to hang out with Tim Bennett? Tim Bennett, I remember one year, <laughs> one year Tim Bennett said, do you know how much money I made last year? And I went, I don't know. And he went, $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> what? And that doesn't seem possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. But knowing can't live indoors on that. But knowing Tim, Tim briefly after he uh, after he got divorced, he lived at his place without paying rent for like nine months because they just never asked. <laughs> That's true. And then wow. at some point they went, "Hey, uh, we noticed you're a little behind on your rent." And you know what he did? He moved. <laughs> Right. I mean, I think you have to live there forever because you just pay one month and then they'll forget again. Yep. You pay once every nine months. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I I understand. I mean, I've had years where I made very little money. Yeah. And, and I had my power turned off. And when I lived in Koreatown, I had my power turned off. And I my solution was to run an extension cord into the hallway. <laughs> and I plugged into the hallway outlet. And then plugged all of my appliances into the extension cord. <laughs> and then I was like, great, I can watch TV, <laughs> make toast. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've had the power turned off once or twice. And, you know, it always feels great. <laughs> it, you know, yeah, but, you know, it's when your fault. When you're an angry, poor young man, I don't know if you've had this experience too, where like if the power gets turned on, and if you're not careful, you'll look around your apartment and you'll see something you for sure shouldn't have purchased. <laughs> out so much. Oh, yeah. It'll be yeah. like you're like a DVD set, a set of DVDs for like one, like a box set. You'll think, right. I'm not the kind of person who can afford a box set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. I'm like, oh, Cool, a giant bag of weed, but I can't set an alarm clock. Nice. Uh, cool. <laughs> Good job, me. <laughs> uh, oh, so nice to have graduated. Yeah. That. Yeah, it's, yeah. My any of my money problems now are old man money problems. They're like, ah, shoot, I gotta go pay for that prostate or whatever it is you gotta do. Yeah, gotta take the ex-wife off of the 401k. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little action, actual errand that I have to do this week. Sorry, you have it's to do that. It's only been 10 years. Yeah. I guess sorry, but also, um, well, you didn't want to still be married, so congrats as well, because it's... Yeah. And now Sue's there, and Sue's amazing, so... Right? Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you owe me some trivia. Um, yes, I do. Um, once upon a time, I don't know if this is still the case, but once upon a time, Billy Joel had a fan magazine that you could subscribe to. Oh. What is the name of the fan magazine? Uh, let's see. It is mentioned in the liner notes to one of the albums. They're like, by the way, send 10 cents to this address. 
and you'll get a copy of the piano clan <laughs> wait this is better let's hear more made up fake names <laughs> all right all right give me a second the piano <laughs> clan um um <laughs> okay hold on I, I can get another one <laughs> Oh, tell, send in your, send in. tell you about it. That's the uh -oh. name of the thing. We're going to tell you about it. Fantastic. Okay. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, um, We're going to tell you about it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I haven't peaked. Uh, no, no chance. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> um, you about it. Let's see, um, Zine from an Italian restaurant. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> Zines from an Italian restaurant. <laughs> oh, the real answer is not as good now. Uh, oh, okay. So it's it's a it's a one piece of paper with all the things and uh, written on one side, and it's called Big Sheet. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> Big Sheet. Oh, it was the root beer rag. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's just literally the name of one of his songs. Okay. Well, and, yeah. and also uh, great self deprecating <laughs> to call your own fan newspaper a rag. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Okay. So, yeah. It, not as good as the ones we came up with, though. Oh, God, no. <laughs> We should write uh, write that up for McSweeney's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, McSweeney's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who was it? I don't remember. Somebody said um, it, somebody was making fun of McSweeney's, and they there's something about I. Uh, it was I don't know how they set it up, but was somebody reacting to a hilarious piece in McSweeney's, and it was just was that SNL. I don't know where that was, but I did see it as well. Yeah. And I enjoyed it because it wasn't mean, but it was definitely letting you know you're like, okay, you're kind of funny. Yeah. It's just the difference between humor and comedy. <laughs> Which uh if you wanna get if you wanna turn me into an angry young man, <laughs> that's the thing I can rail about forever. Oh, I I love yeah, I love combos like that. I a lot so of people I uh, love Think that they're the same yeah and then if you can do one you can do the other and that's when i i become very boring I, uh, oh. oh jesus christ <laughs> what? What's, uh... damn why did that happen that's from graceland that's my wife being my wife um ah. <laughs> Hey, Mary Jo, um, I am uh, I'm on my podcast. Can I call you back? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, bye. All right. Hi, Mary Jo. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. I Take was, her off the 401k. Done. Done. I, uh, I was in a comedy Zoom show the other day, and I did uh, the little joke that I told you before we started recording. I did that joke. Fantastic. And this uh, other comic private messaged me during the show and said, I love that joke. That joke's amazing. And sometimes, sometimes in conversations that you've witnessed of me, I mm. don't handle the next part of what you're supposed to say in good company correctly. Because I'm just yep. sometimes not good in groups or even in one or two people's. I'm not always good. <laughs> so I go, yeah, I came up with it watching a terrible comedian do a joke on the same topic and trying to distract myself. <laughs> But that was true. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> and then she got quiet, and I was like, I think I, yeah. Why do I still do this? Why? Why do I like? Why am I not capable of not doing this? I've been in so many rooms where, uh, just said one sort of reasonable thing, then the conversation would have ended them going, "Ah, oh, Jim seems like a nice guy," which is all I want. <laughs> You got you uh, have a problem being too straightforward. Yeah, people don't want to hear the truth; they want to hear the next thing. Yeah, I say, "Hey, nice joke." You say, "Oh, thank you." Yep. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I thought of it while I was uh, fucking your sister. <laughs> Why? Oh, because was, she wasn't good. I got distracted. <laughs> I got distracted. I had to do something. I mean, uh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> too late? It's too late now? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> years, years ago i wrote one of my favorite sketches that nobody else seemed to like was i wrote this sketch where a guy had a button on his shirt that said i lost 75 pounds ask me how and somebody goes how did you lose the weight cancer <laughs> great nobody else liked that sketch i loved it, it was a black it was a black, <laughs> it was a black that, um, that is that is you yep then it's you. I'm like, oh, cancer. <laughs> Why are you? Just, they just want you to. <laughs> oh, Jim. Will you ever win? <laughs> well, oh, Mr. Burns, that's great. <laughs> oh. All right. So you gave me your trivia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. And, and we I made it better. Yeah. Yeah, we made up yeah. better newsletters. Um, I'm on the fence about the two songs, and I think I'm going to pull the trigger on one of my favorites so we can actually talk about it. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. Oh, boy. In a two-hour special. <laughs> <laughs> that song. Great. Now, before we get there, Agreed, that's your He Likes the Beatles song, right? I feel yeah. like... I mean, it definitely is. I mean, a lot of them are. Yeah. Um, the the one it, it, what is the name of the one that I think is the Beatles song? It's the same al album. No, it's not. <laughs> it's from Glass Houses. It's uh, all the waiters in your grand cafe. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all the waiters in your grand cafe. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me yeah. Why. Um, I'd like that we both have to do the old man thing of singing all the words up to the title <laughs> before we can think of it. All the waiters in your grand cafe, raise their tables when you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Scenes from Italian Restaurant to me is his uh, meatloaf song. Yeah, you mentioned that before. We'll talk about that more. I can see that too. It's his um, Paradise by the Dashboard Lights kind yeah. of sort of a thing. It's, um, it's, it's three songs that weren't quite a song yeah yeah and great perfectly written by the way that song yes that song is beautiful and perfect yeah i will i will say that forward to not being controversial about it yeah i have a feeling both of us are gonna go lyrics good music good song good i think that's that song but <laughs> with hopefully more interesting details and plus me mentioning cancer Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be nine weeks in a row. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nine weeks before we started recording and many more weeks before that with anybody who ever had to talk to me. <laughs> I think yeah. I told you this one time at work, uh, I was uh, in one of the many labor jobs I had, I was cutting a box open um and somebody said you shouldn't hold your cutter that way because you might accidentally cut yourself and i just met this person and i go well then at least i'll feel something great and they laughed and i knew for sure we were friends and we're still oh good okay <laughs> i thought it was going to be the other ending no this was the one where i was like oh good kindred spirit and that yeah. turns out they're one of the the nice like hits where i'm like oh they love this about me good good oh good yeah <laughs> Well, maybe that's why you'd never say the right thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> to sort people out. Yeah, because I'm like, well, these are the people who can put up with this shit, so. <laughs> Congratulations to six people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect number to pick. I don't know why, but it really was. <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop this. Uh, we will We'll see all of the friends of the show next week. Yep. And, and Billy, I hope you're doing all right. He's a, 